Okay, I let I decided to let you listen while I work. Hold on. Okay, greetings everyone. This is Gerard and Chief of Filipino Soul Magazine, aka S G I B magazine. Stand for soldiers got intentions. Believe that. Because everyone should be soldier for something, a dream, a goal, an idea, a train thought, something. And on the PBG's production of Stand for Solo Soldiers. Uh, uh, photos by Gerard, the best in freelance publicity photography. Filipino Soul, SGIB, Hip Hop, Urban Raw, The Truth, a photographer's magazine. Well, right now I'm putting new music on my other I on my other LGG while I'm putting the magazine together, and I thought maybe you like to listen to what I'm listening to while I am doing this. So right now I'm gonna kick it off with Miss Ellen Bayou, 2016. Daily Showtime winner, my formal artist. <laughs> but anyway, be that as it may, I wish y'all a lot of luck in the future. I mean, sometimes overcoming things is a lot easier than it sounds. Um, the reason I said formal artist because um, Ellen and I are going through a couple of things right now that I think that we really have to find our business and personal uh, working relationship. So, uh, uh, with that being said, uh, I will say no more. So that's what I meant by when I said former. Uh, this was uh, the big announcement I said I was going to make, and I, I didn't make it because I spoke to her again. And so, you know, so so we'll see where it, we'll see where it goes. show you where I am at with the magazine. Let me raise this up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I think it's only fair I do <laughs> show you where I'm at <laughs> with the magazine. So, wait a minute. If you want to know how Helen is, let me tell you how Helen is. It's so nice to have my daughter's ring back. I, I really... Uh, uh. But anyway, um, you know, this is these are shades that I've my style I've worn for many, many years. They're Oakley's. Oakley no longer makes them. They're very scratch, but every now and then if I feel like I want to be super cool and don't care to see where I'm going, I will wear these. <laughs> so anyway, so these are, but lo and behold, I was able to find some bootleg ones. Uh, as you can see, these are, these are very similar. They're very similar in style. In fact, that they can, you know, if you did without the Oakley, you know, you wouldn't know the difference. So, but um, Ellen, Helen has gotten into a new phase now. You know, she's decided that she likes my glasses too. So she's been chewing on them. And so, although now I'm talking about you, and this is the other pair I had, and I went downstairs for just one minute, and she destroyed them. I said, oh my God. So now, so now, she, she's still a good dog. She's a wonderful dog, a wonderful companion. And I'm really grateful to have her. So that's how she's doing. She's doing fine. You know? I know. I was going to show you how the magazine was going. So let me at least try to stay on track. Uh, this is the magazine. I said I put it up here. Uh, yeah, there, there you can see right the glare. I'll kind of hold it up like this. And you kind of see, um, this is, uh, the cover's going to change, but this is how it is right now until I really get to want to finalize it. You can see we have the famous rock on the inside. Um, this is the content page. And then, of course, we have their story here. Uh, we have the no comment. There's going to be a lot of no comments in this magazine. Of course, famous rock. And then here we have uh, Greg Greg Austin from um, from Las Vegas. He is the Magic of Motown show and more. So if you do get to Vegas, I recommend you go and see that. Then we have Carmita's Corner. 
this is from uh, Las Vegas, I mean from Los Angeles, California. She made a contribution to the magazine. Carla is a long, long time friend of mine. She's with Barney Hilton Sweeney, the founder of the Free Grammy Party. And um, we know this heaven up above, she's teaching people how to network. She also married to Jerry Pittman, who was the first black limousine driver in Los Angeles. Okay, so there you go. She, she made a contribution, you get to read that more about that. And Carrie Brown. Uh, Carrie Brown is, um, she is a, a, a friend of mine while I was in Los Angeles. In fact, she was one of the reasons why Las Vegas threw out the red carpet for me when I first came to Las Vegas, uh, being associated with Bonnie and all that kind of stuff. I had so many interviews. You know, I, 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 I had to leave Las Vegas and went to Vancouver, Washington, where that turned out, didn't turn out too well, and then Portland didn't turn out too well, and came back and the event didn't happen, and I was homeless living in my car after the nervous breakdown. In short. But Carrie is, um, uh, she has a program named Bully, and this is one of the reasons I guess I, I can say that why Ellen is, <clears throat> and I are, are, are not as uh, tight as we were before is because the bullying that she's getting on the internet, you know, uh, from, 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 people, from people who are affiliated with me and family and friends who are affiliated with her. Uh, for some have a lot of problems with her working with me. You know, rather be I'm a black American or rather be because, um, you know, um, um, people misunderstand the relationship, the business relationship that we're working between us, or sometimes it's just the, the animosity that was spewed out by my ex on the internet about her, that, that hurt her and her family tremendously. And, uh, and like an open wound, uh, it keeps getting put salt into it, and it hurts her uh, often more. And it has affected our relationship, like I said, you know, more than I care for it too. So uh, if uh, Ellen and I don't move forward, the way we would like to let bullying be the reason, if nothing else. Uh, yes, uh, um, uh, and Carrie Brown, uh, oh, she's in this measure. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about uh, but also Blaze the Mic. Blaze the Mic is with my uh, Nigerian queen, the hardest working Nigerian at show business, I like to call her. She's been with me many, many years. And she can't wait till I get to New York, and I can't wait to see her, you know, and Jamie. So uh, she's in here too as well. And then we have another article, artist, uh, a column donated by John White. John White is a contributing writer in this magazine. He wrote an article called, I wrote a location, 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 and is doing business in the Philippines. For those of you who want to know about doing business in the Philippines or how is it in doing business in the Philippines, you want to read this story because it's, uh, it's about that. And then we flip it over to the Filipino side. Uh, the Filipino side, you know, has... Um, has um, uh, the basketball player, uh, B-O-N-E-L-B-A-L-I-N-G I-T. I call him the General Giant. He's one, one of the, uh, the, the, the the national basketball players. I call him to the NBA here in the Philippines. I uh, did an a, a article on him. You know, I, I always had the ability, and I want to thank, you know, Josie for getting this interview for me with him. But before I did, I had the Lady Boys on, on the cover. Some of you may remember the Lady Boys, the, the Lady Boys of Cebu, who were on the cover of the magazine. They were initially on the cover, but then um, um, once I got, you know, it's interesting because we do an event and an event canceled because they saw this cover when they went to my Facebook. They said, "Oh no, we don't want to be so." I said, "What do you mean? So it's your culture." You know, my God, how can how can you want to dis disassociate disassociate with your culture? Lady boys are or transgenders or transvestites or have you called? They're very popular throughout Asia. So uh, uh, three of the most beautiful ones I, I met, and I uh, I decided to to not disappoint them and give them the inside front cover of the magazine, so they will have their cover to as well. Uh, of course, this is the content page. Uh, these are two girls at the um, White Sand Beach. They are cutting the Filipino national flower uh, down. Uh, so I thought that'd be a nice uh, um, gesture in this one. And of course, Benina. Benina, yeah, that's not Benina. See, so, sometimes I, I can't read, but sometimes I have to let it come to me of hearing someone else say it, you know, to get close to what the word is. I'm a, when I say I can't read, you know, I can read, but, you know, I'm a very poor reader. You know, I'm a very poor speller. And, you know, we'll leave it at that. I'm, if you want to know more, go to some lines to hear her. About. And then also, we have, uh, this is, um, um, 
Basak, see, I'm looking at the word, but I have to remember how it's it was said. Basak, a community school principal. C-E-R-E-L-I-N-A, S-O-S-A-B-R-O-S-O-A, S-O-L-L-E-R-I-N. I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, but there she is. She's also one of the principals of one of the schools that I spoke at, and she talks about the education here in the Philippines, so you wanna get that one too. And of course, more of that. Uh, this is the article on the Lady Boys. Uh, each one of them, I gave them their own page. So um, it was very cool, you know, uh, very nice interview. Of course, more, no comment. And then we go into on assignment of icons, hype man, LJ. LJ is in this issue. Uh, LJ is one of the hype mans here in, in Cebu where he, he, you know, he keeps the, the audience pumping, hyped, and, and on the floor. So I, I figure I get a little flavor about that. Um, also, uh, Ellen Bayou. I mean, I have to write an article about my artist, Ellen Bayou. So there she is. You know, this uh, two page story of, of Ellen Bayou. You know, of course, complete with her daughter, Christian Florian. And shout to her performing through all throughout Cebu. And then, of course, Danny Massa. The Chinese Memorial Cemetery. This is a sad one. This is a story that I wrote about uh, children living in, families living in cemeteries. You know, it's, it's very sad. I, I did not take pictures there in the cemetery because I did not want to feel that, uh, that I was exploiting them. You know, oh, I guess it's starting now. <laughs> you know, uh, one morning, I, you know, about six people text me, like, drive, drive, I need this, drive, drive, help out, send money. Uh, so anyway, uh, anyway, so, um, uh, uh, it's very sad about what happened, uh, them living in the cemetery, so I did an article about that. If you want to see a video about that, you go to my Facebook, I mean my YouTube, Filipino Soul Magazine on YouTube, you'll also see uh, a video titled, a Children Living in a Graveyard, and you'll see there um, uh, a video from, I shot from there. Next we go to the, on assignment with the Ink Masters of Cebu. These are some of the best tattoo artists not only in the Philippines, but they're getting recognition around the world for their skills of doing tattoos. So, um, of course, uh, I, I interviewed, I was invited there, I, I, I interviewed a number of them. I tried to put everybody who I photographed in there, and, oh, which reminds me, I forgot the names. Ah, uh, okay, no, because um, I try to give names, mention everybody, the people who were the models and whatever in there, but anyway. Uh, I don't have time, but you can see some of them. But there's also a young lady in there, and that's that. Uh, let me see what else. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So I just want to give you an idea of where the magazine is at while um, while I'm putting it together. So hopefully by the end of this month, I'm already starting that many pages. So it won't be long now before. I, I'm putting fillers in there now. Fillers are what uh, the blank spaces that you see. Those are fillers. And over into that time, I would just go to businesses or go to, you know, yeah, businesses and ask them, can I put their business in the Philippines? In the magazine, I said, "Don't cost you nothing. Just give me a business card or something, just because I want to add nice Filipino flavor to the magazine." And uh, when I feel that uh, uh, I don't have enough, of them, then of course that's where I throw in my 40 years uh, as being a freelance publicity photographer uh, comes in, where I I throw in a shot or two of some of my private collection. All right, so let's get back to um, well, let me get back to work. <laughs> Now, if you go to my video, uh, you'll see this Ellen performing a song, and she, it's called, the song is called Kise Seya, which means, who is she, and what does she have, okay? So anyway, so uh, anyway, uh, I asked Ellen, we were we went to the J-Mall, turned to be closed, and so on, so I said, Ellen, let's do a video. And so she said, okay, so, um, which a video that we did, we, we, we would walk around with, well, this, as a speaker, one of these little, little speakers. Then we just played Ellen would sing. And so she did a song, this one here. So I said, I, I know in New York they were doing it in the subways where you put a hat down and people put money in it. So I said, I know, I take a hat, I'll put it down. And I gave a lot of the locals change to walk by and put money in. So it's a very, very funny. People say, what are you doing? And we're like, what? Because <laughs> they don't see that. They don't see people doing that here, putting money in a hat because somebody's singing. So it had a nice little flavor to it, but that's what's happening. <laughs>
President Duterte, there's a lot of controversy about his his method of handling his drug problem here in his country, and he just he made his second State of the Union address. Uh, uh, he just I believe he just got reelected again, or uh, uh, I think got reelected, but this is his State of State of the Union address, and he simply said that look, he says uh, he says um, you know I don't care what people say. He says, I don't care, I'm paraphrasing of course, how they judge me. He said, my most, he says, he says, when he took this job as president, he said he was overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed the problems that the Philippines was having, you know, with the, uh, uh, not only the drugs, but the corruption, you know, through the police, the military, you know, everything, you know, uh, throughout uh, throughout the administration. And, you know, he had no idea. And oftentimes you don't have any idea what you're getting into when you step into uh, the shoes of a position such as president of a country. So, but he's made it his own personal mission to make sure that he does everything he can for the children to grow up in a, a safe environment and the elderly to live out their final days in a safe environment. And he says, yes, he says, uh, yeah, there, you know, there are, you know, you know, there are, you know, people who say killings and all that stuff like that, but he says it's the most important thing, you know, you know, for him to do is, is to clean up his country, you know? And, you know, I look at it as very admirable. He said, you know, he says, I don't care what they say. He said, they don't know human rights, whatever, he, you know, he, you know, and it makes me think about Donald Trump, you know, you know, a United States president, you know, and what he's going through now, which is kind of, you know, that's why I wrote that thing that said, you know, I wanted Hillary Clinton, but since we got Trump, oh, well, shits and giggles for the next four years, you know, I mean, but he's an opportunist. 
See, he's not a racist. He's not a um, an Aryan. You know what do you call it? A, an Aryan racist? Or, I don't know. A white supremacist? He's not a white supremacist. He's an opportunist. And he knows he he knows the Republicans are not going to win the pres presidency next year. So he's going to take this opportunity now to tell you that the Putin, the Russians are going, to, are going to fill in because they don't want him to have another election because he because they're not going to want the, they want the Democrats in. You know, so they're going to help the Democrats win. See, he's an opportunist. This is a perfect example. He's taking an opportunity now to spin the table. You know, you know, this, you know. And, and I had a friend here uh, for lives upstairs, and he's just just listen to Fox. Just listen to Fox. I said, don't you hear Fox having problems trying to defend some of the actions of what he's doing? You know, oh, I hate all Democrats. You see, when you use a word like you hate, and then when you take a, a broad brush and, and paint a whole organization, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a whole group of people in that brush saying you hate them, you know, Nothing can be wrong than that story. Uh, I finally got into rehab in Oregon. And, you know, uh, I finally decided to give it my all. I came in early, set up chairs, made the coffee. I stayed late, you know, to clean up the place and make sure everything was fine. and. And I had two sponsors. I had a sponsor who I can call at 3 a.m. in the morning, and I had a sponsor I can call at 3 in the afternoon in case I need trouble. So for a whole year, I did this, and I watched people celebrate their birthdays, their one-year anniversary, their five-year anniversary, and it's like, ah, one of these days, one of these days, maybe I'll get to celebrate a one-year anniversary of being clean and sober. So yes, lo and behold, my birthday came. And I was at the table as drawings, you know, one year anniversary, yeah, yeah. So of course, I get to speak, and so I, talk, I started talking, and someone said, shut up, we don't want to hear that. I said, what? What? I started talking, and there was someone was, what? And I'm thinking, this is my day. Why are you hurting me on my day? Why I went to another group and celebrating my birthday and it was like the same coach shoulder, the same like we don't want to hear this. You know, I said, Wow. And so I said, you know what? It ain't you all, you all are full of shit. You all are full of shit. I said, I quit and I walked out. And for the next three or four months I, I white knuckled it. I said, I don't need them. I don't need them. They're all hypocrites, they're all liars. They all say they love me. You know? So I painted the whole organization and accused the whole organization on the actions of just a few. I'm photographing babies. <laughs> one of the most craziest jobs, one of the most cruelest, cruelest jobs is photographing babies. <laughs> With this company, you put them on the pole, you take a picture real fast before they fall, you catch them. Like this, you pose like this, yeah, but it was fun. It was good money, good money. You know, you know, uh, ten dollars a stop. If I can do anywhere from seven to twelve, that's one hundred twenty, you know, one hundred twenty a day. You're going to hitting places, just photographing babies. You know, so, so anyway, so the, um, the owner's son was driving me, and so we got to talking, and he started talking about doing drugs. So I said, well, okay, blah, 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 blah. so we got on a subject of moving too fast. I don't say drugs, I say moving too fast. So anyway, so what happens that uh, he uh, 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 dropped me off in my car, and I crank my car up, and I'm cruising. So I'm cruising, and I see a girl, you know, oh, <laughs> boy, do I love girls. <laughs> Dry, soaking wet, big, <laughs> What's up, baby, you need a ride? Yes, I need a ride. So come on, she said, can you take me over here? I said, okay, okay, take me over here. So she said, I gotta pick up something. I said, okay, you wanna pick up something? We'll pick up something. She said, will you come in with me? I said, okay, I'll come in with you, I'll come in with you. So I stood by the door and the guy had sold her some, some, um, some um, moving too fast. And I watched her while she 
smoked it. And she said, you want some? I said, yeah, 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 I'll take some. So she put it in my mouth and I puffed. And while I was puffing, I had a paranoid feeling. I did not want to turn around. Because if I turn around, the whole NA organization said, See, we told you. <laughs> so needless to say, I was off the races again. So let me stop here and get back to the music. So Donald Trump, you know, you know, uh, my neighbor saying that he hate, hate all Democrats. You know, it's not the thing to do. Donald Trump is doing what Donald Trump does. You know, I'm not surprised. My personal belief is that, like he says, you'd be a fool to think you're not being recorded. And I think he was a fool to think that he wasn't being recorded by by uh, Vladimir Putin. And I think Vladimir Putin has got that P tape on him and he is working it, working it, working it. Like I said earlier before, don't be surprised that little grainy video come out and then of Donald Trump being peed on and everybody's question, is that Donald? Is that Donald? Knowing they got the technology or, or, or the clarity of it coming out. But for the next two years, no, yeah, yeah, just just to keep it going. But uh, yeah, you know, I, um, I, I think um, Vladimir Putin has a you know, for him to stand on on the platform and say, and ask the question: Have you done anything? Did you want Donald Trump to win? And did you have any of your underlings, you know, do anything to try to help him win? He said, "Yes, yes, I did." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and for Donald to say that no, you know, there was no collusion. I don't know. I don't the hypocr the hypocrisy of it all is just it's just all too. Funny. But you know what? I'm happy to be in the Philippines. Philippines are saving my life, baby. So let's get back to. Um, Whatever I'm playing, and let me get back to work. Okay, I'll talk to it. Peace. because I put them in the no comment section. So that's what I'm doing, cruising through my files, looking, I'm starting from the recent and going back. So that's what I'm doing.
right, I hope you enjoyed that. That was a song I just recently uh, fell in love with from uh, Hot Mess. She played it and I could not believe that song. I've never heard it before, but I thoroughly enjoy it. Okay, so those of you who don't know Hot Mess, you go to my Facebook and you see one of my postings where I put the best in freelance publicity photography. Um, I mean, um, my posts are, it's all about perception and you'll see one about a hot mess. You'll see who she is. Right now we're going to go to, we're going to go to a lovely, lovely singer. Her name is May. Uh, she's going to perform a song for you. This was done at a Japanese restaurant not too long ago. And let's have her. Tell me how you like her. She's the soul for tonight that we had, um, been waiting for as Filipino soul around town continues. In the Soul Magazine, we're at Joe S. Restaurant, and this is May, and she's going to perform. We have Joey, owner of the restaurant, who's on keyboards. <laughs> see someone so so blossoming so beautiful so full of life you know uh, so energetic so determined so curious you know and then to see it see her wilder it's like it's, it's you know it's, it's, it's like watch, watching a fruit die on a vine you know where she doesn't smile anymore there's no laughter in her heart you know it's you know this you know there's no there's no love in her eyes it hurts me. It hurts me to see that she has been broken down to a mere shell of herself. You know? I'm even to the point where she had said, I'm going to quit singing. I'm not singing no more. And I had to tell her, you cannot deprive the world the gift that God has given you. You cannot do that. You know? I said, not only that, you're a performer. You can't help but to sing. You will sing. And so, you know, it's, it hurts me. It hurts me.